I just want to start off with basically a bit of information. So the convoy is a go and it is going to be the largest protest event in Canadian history. And I think, as I mentioned earlier, that a lot of people are, are sort of waiting now for that big event and that's understandable because that's really going to blow this thing wide open. One of the reasons the convoy is happening and and why it's so important uh, is because it's, it's visibility, it's media attention that we've been dying to get, uh, which, is, which is a very important part of our, of our movement. Um, and, and just on that note, on our message, we're tirelessly working against the narrative that the media has created, that politicians have created, that we're racist and we promote violence. We all know that's not true. We all know it's 100% not true, other than for a few, either planted by Antifa or general dirtbag racists. So they use that, that we're against the migrant pact to give us that label, right up to Prime Minister Potato. <laughs> and it's, it's working with the general population. It's working with some companies that would otherwise be supporting for instance, the convoy, but they're tentative because the narrative that's been set by the media. So we have to work tirelessly to change that narrative. And it's not only up to myself as a speaker or, or Timothy or others, it's up to everybody here to change the narrative. So any opportunity you get to change the narrative, please do so. We have to get the message across that we're not anti-immigration. We want immigration. We understand Canada was, is built on immigration. We all come from people who immigrated to Canada, every single one of us. That's not our fight. Our fight is keeping control of the policies around immigration and to keep our sovereignty. Instead of having the UN make these decisions for us and dictate policy for countries that sign on to these pacts, that's our fight, right? We have to get away, certain people don't necessarily distinguish between the individual and the group. We have to do a better job of not singling out particular races or religions or, or what have you that people follow. There's nothing wrong with criticizing religion and it is relative to the migrant pact, of course, because most of the migration is coming from the Middle East throughout Europe and, and into North America. So we have to be able to discuss that, but we have to discuss it in a way where we're not putting the focus on the individual. Any one of you folks, if you lived in one of those places and you had an opportunity to come to a free, democratic, liberated country like Canada that has the ability and the freedom to express ourselves and promote equality amongst everyone, Every one of us would take that opportunity and go, go where that opportunity is. So we can't blame the immigrant. We can't blame the migrant per se. We have to take that fight and blame and put the focus on the government and the UN. It will turn in, we are right now a country that is a culture of freedom and liberty and equality and justice and law. And it's important that we hold on to that. It's important that we as Canadians who understand what makes us Canadians hold on to that. Because if we don't hold on to that and we allow the UN to govern our country and others, we're going to lose that. There won't be a country left that we recognize for people to come to because it's going to be equally poor across the planet. That's the ultimate goal of the UN. That's their idea of equality is all countries equally poor, which is why they're stealing the wealth from the Western countries right now to fund the agenda, the agenda that costs 4.5 to 7 trillion annually. So that's our fight. That's the message that we have to get into the media and more importantly into the mainstream Canadian. 
Everyone I talk to that I know personally is against and agrees with what we stand here for today. Every single person I talk to. They can't put on a yellow vest because of their employment or because of whatever groups they belong to ridicule. I don't know if you guys saw CBC skit 22 minutes did the other day on the yellow vest. Disgusting. They call it humor, and of course a lot of people consider it humor. I didn't consider it humorous at all, because all it did was carry on the narrative that we're racist or stupid. The same thing our, one of our local media people did here, Pat Dubois. Same thing, labeled us stupid and racist. We have to fight back. We can't accept that. We can't run and hide from it. We have to fight back. We have to convince all our family members, co-workers, to fight back against that narrative. It's extremely important. We're, we're doing, we're working at it. There's people across Canada that are doing a phenomenal job of doing that. There's a great article done by somebody from the big group uh, with Spencer Fernando. Great article. If you, if you look it up, Yellow Vest, Spencer Fernando, have a read. It's, it's extremely well done. I'm going on the radio tomorrow with Roy Green, and he's nationally syndicated to help change the narrative. So there are some media people and some media outlets that are sympathetic to our cause and they understand our cause based on what I just mentioned. So that's important. And, and CBC has asked to do an interview. We're not sure if we're going to do it or not yet, but, uh, so, but we have to try to break this, this stigma that they've put on us. And so anyway, so part of that process, of course, is the convoy because the LFS movement is bigger than the convoy. But we also understand that the convoy is a huge part of, of what we're trying to do, which is inform people and raise awareness and get into the TVs and the media and the social media of everyday Canadians and, and prove that we're not radical, we're not racist, we're not violent, we don't promote violence and, and really change the narrative. So that's going to be huge. So for those of you who don't know, the convoy is leaving on February 14th from Red Deer. From Red Deer, it's going to Regina. Regina Committee has done a fantastic job of planning and organizing. From there, it goes to Dryden. From Dryden, it goes to Sault Ste. Marie. Sault Ste. Marie to Arn Prior, and then on the 19th of February to uh, Parliament Hill. And it will be history making. Uh, we're, we're assuming that American media will also cover it, uh, Fox News and, and a few others. So it will be. It will also be uh, done live throughout North America. So it really is a huge opportunity for us. And, and so our hope is that the movement grows exponentially after that event. So we're working our tail off to make sure that, that it goes, goes through and, and, and we, can, we can really uh, come together.